said normal. <laughs> Hi, and welcome to the Margie and Lisa show. I'm Margie Wigan. And I'm Lisa Jackson. Yep. And we are very fortunate to have with us on our first segment the fabulous Matt Gauguin and Patrick McDonald from Hopkinton's finest DPW, Department of Public Works. We're going to talk about winter challenges and how we can help as citizens. Yeah. So we have had quite the challenge recently with yeah. Yeah. icing over the past couple of days and that horrible snow and the Arctic blast. blast and, yeah. 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 yeah, it was tough there for a I'm couple sure, weeks. Yeah, I'm sure you guys yeah. saw that image of the school bus sliding yes. down yeah. the hill. Oh, and, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we had that happen a few times with our plow trucks. So, Did you? Yeah. yeah, it just was so slick that yeah. your plow Black trucks were... Even though your truck is heavy, it can't it can't get traction. Yeah, no, wow. that's icy, and just like that school yeah, bus. It can happen just like that, too. Yeah. yeah. We got a like from Stephen so far. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Stephen. Um, so let's go. Let's back up to when it was really, really, really cold. Yeah. And then the ice, mm -hmm. the, the snow. Okay, thirteen. Just 15 tell us, inches, yeah. Yeah. And then the water main broke. Yeah. yeah. So let's talk about that. <laughs> Three of them. <laughs> Three, Three of them, them broke. Yeah. Wow. And did they break yeah. because of the extreme cold? Yeah, the ground shifts and, okay. and the pipes in long lengths, and it's just laying in the ground. And when it shifts, it just snaps mm. the pipe and. There you go. And water comes up and <laughs> makes a mess. And so, so, and freezes, yeah. I, so I was one of the recipients of the of the silty, yucky water. Yes. And so, can uh, you? Can, and but when I was talking with you to say what's happening, you told me that you were. How late did you have to work? And how early did you have to? Well, or was it all night? Well, some of them can be all night or yeah. several hours. Or that one, I think we were out till nine or ten o'clock. So. Wow. And you were on what you were on the the break on West Main mm -hmm. by um, between Faith Church and TJ sort of. Yeah, East Main. Yeah. East, East, East Main. Yeah. 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 Yeah
but this well, we is upgraded, new one. So yeah, we upgraded the new one. And yeah. just in time. Yeah. yeah. Because yeah. Oh, it's, totally it's a lifesaver. It just, it's safer. You don't have to get in the trench. You can just right. let yeah. the machine do the work. And well, you do hear about and... DPW workers, I mean, unfortunately, yeah. getting quite yeah. injured or losing their oh, lives. Like cave yeah. 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 So it's, I mean, that's, that's really, I don't think people realize the danger that goes along with oh, your you're job. you're dealing and, with mud and water and it just yep. slams. And heavy equipment and gooey. Yeah, and, it's and, a lot of, a lot of everything. Thing. Yeah. yeah. Well, plus no. the two degrees. That's what just completely. Yeah. I was in awe yeah. of the. Right. Of, I'm gonna get tears in my eyes. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> no, seriously, just <laughs> but lo- we're looking grateful. at them with yeah. the machines and the water, and I'm thinking it's two degrees. I can't. Yeah. yeah. It was so that and was amazing to me. So how can we help? So in a situation like that, as citizens, yeah. Yeah, as citizens, if just if our water be- starts to do something weird, or if we notice. Well, like during the break, you just leave your water off and. Let us do yeah. our thing, get it fixed, and we open hydrants up and get it flowing, and mm-hmm. okay. and then Wash it let it settle. Usually, generally overnight, it'll settle, and and you know it's, a lot of people just run their bathtub cold water, right? And just just get the so dirt. So, what out are of it those particles? It... <laughs> I know a lot of people are curious of what those particles are, and well, it's just the I old iron. Or, you know, yeah, I don't know what that was. Yeah, the old the iron that's in in the pipes from right. Put that off. Yeah. yeah. No, but it's. I mean, for me, that's what I think it looks like. I mean, it's it's orange yeah. and it looks yeah, like iron, iron yeah. but you don't want you looks know like the inside of an old pipe. Right. Yeah. So people, yeah. you know, Oxidation. people worry about. Yeah, I mean, no, the water. It's, it's no. you can drink it, or yeah, you know what I mean. So I mean, obviously, and we're so fortunate we have such nice water. I mean, that's we have really really amazing water in Hopkington. Um, So that you know those things. But as as citizens, like during snow emergencies, when you guys are plowing, so obviously parking bans, we stay out of the way. Mm-hmm. Stay off the yeah. street. And then if we don't have to drive somewhere during a storm, stay Absolutely. home. Absolutely, stay home. <laughs> yeah. Please, that's, that's yeah. A, yeah, yeah. What about, yeah. Um, don't should run. We, don't should go we, running in the middle of a snowstorm. No, that's but should we run idea. to the truck with like a thermos of coffee? Absolutely. Cookies or candy. Some kind. I brought my snowplow driver out a handful of candy during the Christmas storm. I'm like, oh my God, you're working on Christmas and you must be tired. And I'm like, here's Halloween candy. Halloween is weird. I was like, how can I spike these guys? So I have something um, from John. John says his curb was damaged by plows. Mm -hmm. And how does he report that? When does he report it? Do you know what he should do on that? Well, you can contact Mike Mansa down at the highway department. Okay. From there, he'll dispatch that out to his, you know, employees. So that's a and highway then, department. Yeah, so thing. that'll be a highway department. All right, and then gotcha. we'll get on the list and uh, they'll get out there and okay. prep that uh, road and get a new berm in or whatever damage was done. And yep. Because yeah. the, the, the sidewalk and the berm and the curb is theoretically town property. It's right. not belonging yes. to It's yes. a 20 oh, foot correct. easement, right? I think it's 15. I, I or 15. Think it's 15. 15 or 9 or something. Oh, okay. Like that. Interesting. Yeah. Yes, correct. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And then um, Mike wants to know. It, um, how do they go get sand for the icy driveway? Is there a place at the DB top, DPW in one of those big up here on resident sand? Right barrel? up here on Marshall Street. Yep. Oh. There's a little okay. there's a bin, bin right they there. set up for Marshall Street. And yep. people can yep. go with their buckets and pick yep. up. Yep. Yep. Nice. Yeah. Bring, you might want to bring your own shovel. Sometimes they disappear, but I'm sure. But, <laughs> yeah. but, uh, but everybody bring. should travel with a shovel anyway. Right? I yeah, do. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Right. 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 Yeah. New yeah. England. Yeah. Exactly. 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 Yep. My dad used to travel with. Those they were what were they tire they were like a, tire it was like chain a metal, tracks yeah it was a metal it was a yeah. metal like a rectangle grid mm-hmm. yeah and it's he'd for stick that under the tire yeah. yep. and sure enough it would it, go it yeah. just needed the tracks on top yeah. of the snow yeah. and then kitty litter but I don't really know yeah if that's a good that thing. helps yeah, it's, yeah um, so we got likes from Pat and Andy. So Excellent. people are watching. That's okay. good. All right. Pat and Andy. <laughs> so, so, what a, so tell us about your day like non-disaster. What is your day like non-disaster? Well, in winter, or not, so non-winter, winter. Winter. Not, not dealing with like water main breaks and, sh- and shoveling and, or not shoveling, but more <coughs> plowing. What is your day like? Right like? now, the highway Shelling. department, you know, keeping up with the potholes. Oh, yes. Oh, They're popping really? everywhere. They're unbelievable. Yeah, you can fill are them. Are worse this year? You can fill them. Today and tomorrow, go back to the same spot, and ten feet down the road, you'll have two more. Wow! So why are they worse this year? Because I don't. I, I was on route nine. Yeah, the extreme yeah. change in temperature. The, the rain, temperature. The, the rain yeah. and the frost will mm. bring them out. 
the awesome. road shift. And so we so now we have Stephanie who wants to know any good tips to keep pipes from freezing in the house. I know this answer. <laughs> yeah. You guys go ahead. Just make sure all your windows are closed in the basements. Um, if if it's if it's a cold basement, they recommend you leave your water running a little bit at night. night. Drip, yeah. Just yeah. let it drip, drip just drip, enough yeah. to trickle. Keep yep. the water moving so it won't stop and freeze. Yeah. So just I had a sink, um, a sink on obviously on the outside wall, and I had a wooden bulkhead at that point mm -hmm. that was kind of drafty. Yeah. And the pipes were right inside the bulkhead, uh, and they hadn't been insulated. Wrapped or, yeah. So it right, yeah. so it froze and whatever. So I after that packed the packed them with insulation, yeah, you can. and then um, at some point put a metal bulkhead which made a big difference they had yeah. frozen again yeah. worse than wood and yeah. that's and, tough, um, yeah. the other thing was in this really really two degree negative whatever it was temperature i actually um had a space heater in the bathroom that's kind of stuck yeah. on the side of mm -hmm. my house because it's 120 years old and at some point that was stuck on yeah, yeah. you know yeah. it was oh, an extra yeah. 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 put a bathroom in the house <laughs> yeah <you're right. laughs> so so i ran that space heater just to keep it a little yeah, warm in there because that I, my theory was it's right. not in the house yeah like, exactly but, yeah so and sometimes I, you can leave your cabinet doors open oh, just yes. let the air in the house oh that's yeah that's keep good. it warmer so a question i have about it too is like so we, our street we just have water and not sewer mm -hmm. and some streets have both and some streets have none mm -hmm. so how is that like Someday, will Cross Street get sewage, um, you know, sewer? Oh, I don't want sewage. No, sewage, <laughs> sewage, <laughs> sewer. removal. Sewer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's sections of town that will probably never see it. Yeah. Water or sewer, it's just us. too much money to run it up. And, right. And no, I was curious because I always laughed. I'm like, well, I have water. And, I, you know, I was living in the city for, and I was from Idaho before, and we always had our own pumps yeah. and yeah, septic exactly. systems yeah. and all that. But I thought it was interesting. I'm like, well, they dug a hole for the water, but why wouldn't they put the sewer in there when they, but probably funding, right. like you said. Yeah. It's funding, and, yep. and the sewer's got to go to a treatment plant someplace. Right, so, so capacity. Yeah. So capacity. Well, it has to be exactly. close to it or somehow right. get yeah. there. Right. Yeah. Pipes that don't break, because yeah, that would be exactly. gross. Yeah. So, and then your water yeah. pipe that comes to the house, how far in on that water pipe are you guys responsible for? Because I know that's always kind of a question, like when that pipe... Um... Well, we're responsible to the shutoff in the lawn or at the, at the sidewalk. Or okay. From the shutoff to the house, it's a homeowner. Gotcha. Yeah. So I was just curious, you know, I was wondering yeah. about that. I'm like, my house is, was yeah. built in the 50s. I'm like, someday I'm sure that'll need to be replaced. Yeah, because now was... you get onto private property and yeah. if we start digging and breaking things and right. people get mad. And... Who, yeah. the, who so. would never break anything? <laughs> yeah. Fix it. So, oh. so Tom has a comment on Facebook. My mailbox was hit by a plow. Do I have to fix it myself or will DPW do it? I think I know that one too. Well, I think there's a 24-hour... Uh, yeah, 24 that's, hour that's call. 24. If it happens, it you, you have to. 24 hours to call and say you got hit by the snow plow. Or, right, because they can't really prove yeah, they it. Can. They could have hit it. And right. if you can <laughs> fix it yourself, great. I mean, it's, right. a lot of times it just set it back up and screw it on. And, right. Okay, that's really but, nice. But, that is so nice. if a plow hits but, it and you call right away, yeah. then they'll say, oh, yeah, sure, we know that nice. plow in that time. And that yeah. we'll that's wonderful. You guys are the best. So, what about down trees? So, like, what happens with, and normally that's why the power comes out, that's the power company, but do you guys oh, right. well, it, also. Well, as long as it's not touching any wires, as long as it's not any wires, these guys will. You guys do it. Gotcha. Yeah, so, we had that happen too. Yeah, we, yeah. we our yeah. street. I'm sure you're on yeah. our street a lot, so, cross street. Um, John so. has a question. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. There's something called um, C Click Fix, which is a Mass.gov um, app, apparently that you can download to your phone. Hmm. You go to C Click Fix, I think, and you say what you saw, what needs to happen, and then they send out. A they report, report it maybe to they you. Report to you to fix it. But that's not something you guys have heard of. Like that's first time. Oh, that's not on to us. That's, no, okay. Yeah. All right. That's first time. Might go to the so upper management, maybe. Probably like in, the, in so, the bigger cities or something. They so maybe something they're like thinking about when there's a disaster, we work through the EOC. At, no, um, he was talking about just day to day stuff. Because yeah. ah, during a disaster, I see all the reports of the towns because I deal with 
shelters. Yeah. So we get all the reports from the towns, you know, who's out of power, what's coming back right. on. And that goes through MEMA. So we, we get that information through MEMA. So we're watching, you know, mm -hmm. like we know where roads are closed okay. and things yeah. like that. Yeah. And that's all a report that goes up to MEMA during a state of disaster oh, okay. yeah. when MEMA's so you activated. Be, you're not on that end anyway. You're the person that gets the call that says, go. You're the doer. Go check yeah, this you thing fix it. at yeah. this yeah. place. Yeah, you're just going to make sure go. that road is open. Accessible. Yep. Right. Yeah. Just in case yeah. any fire, police, and, and anybody has to get down there, mm -hmm. you get down there. That's, that's your oh, department. Well, yeah, once it's you on guys, a wire, like I said, then that's power out, out of our hands right there. Right. Yeah. Gotcha. Because yeah. that's what we had. Our neighbor's tree hit the wire. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and then the power obviously was out. And it pulled. It was just a mess. It was funny. I didn't call lose was power. Ever source. Yeah, I, it was my yeah. They, I know. They get my side. Side. And yeah. To shut the power. I mean, off we literally and, live across the street from yeah. each other, but yeah, it's. And then we can clean it up. So. Yeah. 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 That, that's good. Um, all right. So winter challenges, as in, make sure the street is clear for plows to go through. Mm -hmm. Keep your faucets running if it's really cold, yep. or make sure you close the window. Who leaves windows open in their basement? In the well, it's surprising the wind. Animals. The wind will knock them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Animals like my yep. cat doors. I mean, I have it sealed, yeah. but I have a cat door that goes through a window. Okay. In my house. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, the biggest thing is the trash. Oh. We can get that off the side, so oh. our, our sidewalk machines can get by without <laughs> without jumping That's out every really thirty seconds. Point. Right. So what to move does that? someone do if? They have to put their trash at the curb, and it's and it's because the sidewalk machines are new. They're, the They're sidewalks great. are more and more all the time. Mm -hmm. all right. So people who used to put their trash, trash at the curb mm -hmm. now have to think about the sidewalk that they might yeah. not have thought about I'll before. Say, just so just shovel out a little, shovel out a little spot. Yeah. Okay. Just yeah. In between the road and the sidewalk, yeah. there's usually a little. Because if not, then we gotta get off the sidewalk, yeah. go around it, or you know, stop the machine, back out, move. You know, well, I have my plow guy do that. Yeah. I have him do an extra swath on yeah. the end of my driveway, yeah. yep. just so for I can, trash. yeah, for the trash, so it's out of the, so yeah. it's not it's in the just road. Just not idea. Yeah. Keep it in the driveway a little ways, yeah. just out of the way. Yep. Yeah. 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 Little, that's tough. Yeah, that, a lot of because times. Now oh, yeah, it's giant, tough. Now with the giant machines, and we talked about. The fact that the trash, the place that used to send the recycling in China isn't taking it anymore, uh, so now that's a whole other that. problem. Yeah. But you have to have that the barrel in the right direction. Yeah, so you, you can, have to have the little the bar, the higher yep. bar facing. The you street. have to have it so, so we can. can and it's it, right? giant yeah. now, yeah. Yeah. so there isn't. It's harder to tuck it. I would just yeah. say only one minute. Yeah, <laughs> and they're bigger too. They're, <laughs> yeah, the bins are bigger, so it's harder. Yep. Yeah. So yeah. trash barrels, mm. clear the streets, keep your water running. Don't yep. run it if there's a water main break. Yep. And you know that because the, the faucet goes, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. it's coming gurgling. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. um, what else? Sand, salt. Yeah, just be patient. What about the black and... ice? What, any suggestions for what do we do? Stay off the road again? Suggest yeah, just salt. drive salt, really, yeah. really slow and just get to the main drag because it was usually yeah. salted first. And, but yeah. the side streets but are tough. But you can't just stay home. Yeah. And the yeah. other yeah. thought let I let had pass. is, the other thought I had, speaking of let it pass, is, if there's one of you guys trying to get on to me, whether it's a cop yeah. or a DPW guy or a fire truck, yeah. let them on. Let yeah. them go. Yes, yes, please. <laughs> because you guys have a job to do. But, Smarter yeah. to stay behind the sander instead of front of it. Right, exactly. <laughs> I'm always like, woohoo. Yes. But we want to thank you guys for all the work yeah. that you do, and yes. we're, we're grateful Appreciate for it, it. And, and we're happy you came on the show so we could let other people know and and appreciate and understand the work yeah, you guys yeah. do. Thank, Thank you, you very much. the heroes of Hopkinton. Well, yes. not us, the whole nope. department, yeah. the whole highway no. department, no. the whole, the whole, the whole group of guys that do this. Fire, yeah. All 25, everybody. yeah. It's not one, it's yeah. the whole, everybody. All right, the other right. towns yeah. around, too. So, that's right. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, we so, really so, appreciate it. Thanks to everybody. Yeah, uh, thanks to everybody, and yeah. thanks for coming in. Yeah, thank you, guys. Thank you, appreciate it. So we'll be back after the break to talk about the Women's March. Hello, my name is Rick Flannery, and I am the chair of the Center School Reuse Advisory Team. With the upcoming opening of the Marathon Elementary School in the fall of 2018, the Board of Selectmen formed the Center School Reuse Advisory Team to explore the future of Center School. We will recommend a plan for the Center School building and property that will provide outside viewpoints on its use and development. This plan will outline the community's vision, your vision, for the future use of the property and produce recommendation for the board's consideration. Here at HCAM, 
they have asked you, what would you do if someone gave you a television station? The Senate School Reuse Advisory Team is asking, what would you do with a school building? Please come and share your vision for the future of Senate School with us at the first public forum on Saturday, February 3rd, 2018 at 10 a.m. at the Hopkins Senior Center. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you there. My name is Connor. My name is Nina. I'm Gunny. I'm Haley. Hi, my name is Jake. We're the Hiller Volleyball Team. My name is Emma. My name is May. My name is Shelby. My name is Sophie. We're Al Gal, and we love HM. Hey, I want to be. Uh, camp. We love H Camp, and I volunteer for H Camp TV. And I watch H Camp TV, and I love H Camp TV. <laughs> and I love H Camp TV. We love H Camp TV. I love it. I'm sure you do. Welcome back to the Margie and Lisa show. We had a great first segment with Matt Gogan and Patrick McDonald of the. Hopkinton DPW talking about winter challenges and we have one email from AJ who says great segment very informative Excellent. We appreciate the feedback AJ. Yes, thank you yep. So our next subject is we're gonna talk about the women's marches and as mm -hmm. it's kind of interesting um, Margie and I were chatting this week on you know, what what is the women's march for what is the movement? And that's kind of a question you see all the time I mean obviously it's bringing women together and you know things like that so I I did quite a bit of research and I think you did as well to try to find out really is there a message there or is it what's the purpose of the women's march so I'll let you kind of jump in because we discussed back and forth like oh, kind of no, you can go ahead okay <laughs> so I know it's, and it's a tricky you know like and I believe in them but it seems you know what I looked at the signs because yes. I think the signs are what the message a lot of the messages were so protecting reproductive health um, equal pay for women mm -hmm. that seemed to be a sign a lot of anti-Trump um, I think just because of um, you know some of the history behind the, you know his, with women misogynistic behavior <laughs> yeah the I misogynistic think, behavior yeah. maybe what he said and has been recorded um and then also you know i i think it was a time for women to bond i mean i think to come together and i didn't realize we weren't we just got the ability to vote in 1933 after women's suffrage. So for me, that I found that was very interesting. I looked it up. Wow. And, yeah, so That's and, the year yeah. my mother was born. Yeah. Five years ago. Yeah. Wow. 80, it's only been 85 years that women actually voted. Mm. So in, in England started, it was in 1929, that England started, let, allowed women to vote. So that to me, that's like, you know, of my generation, it's like, oh my God, you know? Well, think we need about to get the, all of these rights Civil rights, MLK, we talked about last yep. week. That was 1963. Yes, yes. That's even worse. Right. You know, that's right. 50, uh, equal, uh, another five years ago. Right, another human or, you, right. you know, mm -hmm. men that were fighting in wars for us but not being recognized. Right. And, they, and I don't, so the blacks, I don't think, uh, uh, you know, African Americans, I don't think had the ability to vote yeah. until the 60s. Right. right, right. So it's just, I mean, it's, it's incredible. And they to contribute me. to society. I mean, they, they pay well, taxes. Everybody's, that, yeah. everybody's a person. Yeah. So it's just very interesting to me to look at the, the progress the evolution, that we've yeah. made with rights and then to come up in, in a presidential um, competition So yeah. know, and the conversations right. that laid bare some of the Open. less than... Um, it's so hard to be political. Equal rights right. platforms that right. were out there. And, and I think that's it's what good. generated, I think, you know, you can call it a backlash. Right. Um, and, oh, my gosh, this is what we have now. Right. And, and how did that happen? Right. You know, so I think when I think the first the first march was a year ago because his inauguration exactly. yeah president trump's inauguration right. that's when the first march was right so i you know in which i knew that about it when i researched it but in millions and even this year was interesting other parts of the world there were women's marches yes so which i thought was amazing as Wait, well do you have well i looked and i was trying to find i know in pakistan believe it or not there were women's I marches and there were was it london or paris oh or absolutely paris? london yeah, germany yeah, yeah, yeah. you know africa. european countries there yeah. was definitely south africa yes. um so i thought that was very interesting so i i think you know there is a benefit to right. 
the culture, the climate, the political climate now, because now people are talking about it and, exactly. and bringing it to the forefront, much yes. like we talked about MLK, right. is that, you know, this is good. Yes. I mean, it, it's a little uncomfortable and it's hard to talk about it, but it's it's bringing all these things to the I forefront agree. in the Me Too movement and, you know, all of those things that, right. you know, and everything has two sides to the story, but I think it's important. You yes. know, like people are getting braver. I mean, look at the doctor today that was a, the oh, Olympic um, physician. Seventy-five years. Yeah. Yeah, so he, well, 159 kids terrible. came forward of sexual abuse. So, you know, when you that's think terrible. about that, that's a really, you know, profound thing. But I yeah. think in this very political, very open climate, yeah. and well, I think just... the women's movement makes people feel more brave or more empowered right. to be able to speak forward. Go I ahead. did hear a news report today, actually, yeah. That was referring to the hashtag Me Too mm -hmm. um, movement, and it said three months ago, 75% thought that there was sexual harassment in the workplace. As of today, yeah. it's now up to 83. So I think these are things that people right. are just hadn't really thought about before, hadn't seen right. it, you know, thought it was um, something that was maybe just commonplace. So you know it was interesting, I listened to NPR quite a bit and I was listening to what Catherine Deneuve, I think, yes. said about, oh, well that's just sexuality and, and things like that. And But was that in the 50s? Yeah. Because she's, she was very much... Right, yeah. so I thought that was very interesting. So I mean, certainly you want to be able to, you know, men to be men and women to be women, but also always be respectful. And, well, you know, if somebody is giving you body language that they, do, they don't like that, you know, and flirting, I think, is okay. So I think it's kind of we're trying to figure out, line. we're trying to right. figure out what that, what that means. And for mm -hmm. some people, some things are comfortable mm -hmm. and some things are not. And then, right. you know, vice versa. I have, um, I researched uh, the originator of the hashtag Me Too. Yes. As the woman named Tarana Burke. Right, right. And she was actually in 1997, so this is 20 years ago, she started to think about, was that 20 or 30? My 20. Um, 20. Yeah. So she, I know. That was like, <laughs> she, um, she actually was working with, in some kind of clinic, and she was working with a 13-year-old girl who had been molested uh -huh. and so she said no yeah this is not okay so she started the hashtag me too um her name tarana burke again and that has been made a major societal shift sure um her that movement was then promoted and publicized by Alyssa milano the actress right at which point harvey people, weinstein and all started yeah. to roll and gather you know yeah. all of these supporters and okay me too and okay on my facebook page I hit hashtag me too. Yeah, you, you know, and I, I didn't say I didn't put it out well, there, but all of us have. I think every we, woman in some point has had a uh, uncomfortable. Not, you but know, uh, many. But you know, I think there's an uncomfortable situation sometimes, and yep. you know, it, it's. I think it's very important, and that's what we talk to our daughters right. about on what you know decide what's comfortable and what's exactly. what's not comfortable. Right. So back to women's movement. Yes. Um, I was very fortunate to have. A, um, a woman in town, Mary Jo Andrikin, who I really appreciated, um, contacted me because I asked people if they would like to come in. And we'd yes. love it if you have stories and you want to yes, call. Yes, please comment or on Facebook. We are 508-435-7880 or write to live at hcam.tv and we'll see it on our Facebook feed. Um, so Mary Jo mm -hmm. went with Amy Groves, her partner, and they had... Um, to the she March. She actually took a journal and this is um, this year, no, last year, Thursday, January 19, 2017. Okay. So she journaled her experience. Did she do Boston or did she do D.C.? Oh, no, D.C. Oh, wow. So they were in response to... Right, Trump's and, inauguration. And yeah. that first one. Yeah. Um, so just reading you a few of what she said, a few things she said, she said, why are we here? They're there to attend the inauguration and the Women's March on Washington Sunday. So they were, the inauguration was Friday, the 20th. Mm -hmm. Then the Women's March was Saturday, right. the next day. Yes. So why are we here? We look at what the nation's new leadership is doing and is inciting. Mm -hmm. Racist rhetoric, denigration of women, scapegoating, 
increased violence against marginalized groups, attempts to discredit and suppress the free press, and blatant lack of basic ethics. Wow. So then she said, and this is powerful, that um, Mary is powerful. Jo, thank you for thank sharing Thank you, this. Mary Jo. Yep. She said, these are exactly the hallmarks of fascism, and sadly, our beloved USA seems to be in the early stages of that. Right. And then she said, an elderly, uh, an elder German immigrant once told me that if I ever see the signs of fascism, speak up early before it's too late. Right. Because we know what happened with the Nazis. Yes. They just were going along. Stalin sure. and you want me yeah. To get on the train, okay? Yeah. You know, they didn't. They didn't know. They trusted the government. They trusted what you yeah. know. Yeah. And that, I mean, those are those are the powerful words. And I think that's what's kind of underlying when people ask Marks. what the message is. Right. You know, and I think people want to bring awareness to it and get people to think about it and and really look at what's going on instead of going on with their day to day life, but really think about you know, what's going on. And the, some of the numbers were kind of interesting. This weekend, they didn't have accurate numbers and they're kind of broad, but they mm -hmm. said 1.6 million to 2.5 million people across the country marched in this, which I thought was amazing. And there were over 200, I think, um, 200 different organized marches across mm -hmm. the United States. Mm -hmm. And that's equivalent, that number of who marched is 1.8 to 2.8% of the overall population. So that many people, Fabulous. we weren't out so, there, but you know, know, that many people but went I'm out. I actually was watching. Me too. And there's a wonderful, um, uh, John Ritz saw a wonderful poster. I don't know if it was on TV or if he was actually there, but it was, first we marched, now we're running as in running for office. Yes. So I think this galvanized women to right. say, we we have to do something. We have to we have a We are gonna march, we have a voice, mm -hmm. we stand up, we say this is not okay. Right. And take action in terms of being part of the government. Right. You know, so sit and complain is one thing, take action and change, make a change. Because we can. Right, we, we can make run. a force Well, for it change. was interesting when I was listening to the government shutdown and all of that going on. 19% of the House and Senate are women. That's all that represents wow. the, the 19%. So to me, I thought that was really interesting. Thank you. I I knew it was small, but I didn't realize it was that small. Wow. So again, that that you know, people running, people giving back, people. I don't care what le little Speaking level. Speaking up. Yeah. Speak up. If Speak. you're on the school committee, if you do stuff locally, if you volunteer, if you you know make be have a voice. Right. You know? And the voice. I mean, I, I think, I think some people criticized Hillary Clinton for having uh, a strident kind of voice, right. maybe, or and maybe Strong. more assertive than they were than they were thinking was right. right. And maybe Elizabeth Warren is right. faulted for that. But I think it doesn't matter what the voice is right. in, in the way it's, it's the presented content. it needs to be heard right so i think a strong voice right now is, what is part need. of what needed to make that push right. to say hey you know there's intelligence there is reasonability yeah. reasonableness yeah um you know and and good plans and good thoughts and well, we represent conscience. 51 percent of our population there's All more women than men in wow. that country. So that was another thing I thought that was kind of interesting. And actually following on that, another yep. thing that um, in, in Mary Jo's uh, journal, oh, yes. um, supporters are beginning to arrive in the bleachers across the seat, across the street, sorry, and her, her um, what she could see was the protesters are young and old and in between, mm -hmm. all races and from every part of the country. Awesome. She says, um, she says, on the train, we meet a woman who flew in from Hawaii wow. to protest to today and march tomorrow. Wow. So the, all over the country, right. and as you were saying, in the world, people said, no, right. this is not, we have to say something. Right. We have to speak up. Um, there was one funny, um, she saw one funny poster that said, we messed up bigly. <laughs> regarding regarding the and, and messed up wasn't the exact word that right. I used. I I edited that. Right. Um, you know, but it's just, you know, and right. then there was another um there was a brick by brick brigade, um, which is a public art performance that builds human walls against misogyny. Really? At the march there were hundred and twenty plus men and women with a full yeah. marching band. I loved reading about this. Well and I think wearing yeah. matching black and white yeah. brick wall outfits. I asked what they were from, and a woman answered everywhere. There were really? little signs that quote things that have been said 
um, uh, yeah. And then they played songs like We Shall Overcome, Ain't mm -hmm. Gonna Let Nobody Turn Me Around. You know, so so yeah. the same civil rights, in women's rights, civil rights, human rights. In 2017, rights, 2018. It's the same. Well, and I think that's important, the point you brought up, men and women marched. Absolutely. It's not just women's marches. There were many, many right. men right. that went to support their daughters, their wives, their mothers, their Absolutely. sisters. So I thought that was really amazing as yeah. well. And that's that speaks to, I think, as you said, you know, sometimes we need something terrible mm -hmm. to make people step up and say, right. wait a second, right. not okay, right. you know, instead of just going along. Um, the other thing, at the end of her journal here, um, she was very moved, or she and Amy were very moved to see young women embracing feminism, um, yeah. seeing so many white people carrying Black Lives Matter signs. Yeah. And then she says, there's an emerging recognition of the need to stand together to protect our rights and our democracy. Right. So, you know, it's, I think it's to be so public yeah. with your opinion. And, and actually, there can be a risk sure. in, in stepping up to, to marks like that because, oh, yeah. um, you know, people get out you of might hand be on and anti-protesters right. we saw with the white supremacists yes. that fought against. Th that woman died. Yeah. And the guy, you know, the guy, crazy person, drove his car through some protesters. Yeah. So, it, so that kind of thing can sure can cause the the some unstable people to respond in a, in a way that's not okay. Right. So it is taking a risk. It is. Um, well, and you're putting your foot out there. You're putting your face out there, really, because you're yeah. you may be on the news. You may your sign. Up. You know, and it, I think it's, you know, I, I think it's very important that people, but I love that so many groups are coming together. Yes. Men, women, yes. all nationalities, yes. all sexual orientation. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that that was another thing that came up was, um, you know, L LGBTQ. Yeah, yeah, LGBTQ. Like, Thank you. Like one word. You know what I mean? But yeah. those, you know, those rights. Yeah. And I think what it really comes down to is treat everybody human the same. Human rights. It's human, human rights. Human rights. And that's what it comes down right. to. And I, you know, I hate to say I'm, I'm not a fan of the pink hats myself, but, you know, it, which is okay. But it's I think. It's just a symbol of, of. I think it is too, as well. But I think, you know, but that's part of that movement. That's, you know, like, so people ask, well, it goes a little too far, but I mean, part of protesting and to get seen you have to do things a little more extreme than I just I was going to say a little shock value yeah you know and a little shock value makes it memorable I agree and yeah. I think it, it kind of gives you an association with it right exactly so, it's like a logo yeah kind of <laughs> yes, right you know <laughs> right. Uh -huh. yeah exactly so yeah but I think it's you know it's, it's a really important movement and I think I would love to see people just more people get involved, more men, more, you know, yep. locally and in, in government. In, in and I think, too, if, if um, I agree with you, and I think if I try to look for the good in things, mm -hmm. so the good that came out of this horrible mess yeah. is people are saying, wait, that is horrible. Right. And we don't want that. Right. And then what do we want? Right. Um, so. Right. And now their voices are, and people are thinking, not yeah. only voicing what they want, but they're making people think about what they want. Exactly. So, yeah. But uh, that's the end of this segment. Um, please feel free to comment on Facebook and we'll be back after this break. Yeah, we'll be back with Detective William Bircher to talk about oh, yes. some of the Hopkinton crime and what we can do about it. Thank you. Yeah. This week on The Golden Pan, Lisa and Mary connect us with Don and Beverly Moberg to make shish kebabs and pilaf. Cook faster or is the meat going to cook faster? The meat will cook faster. Okay, so you should put the chicken on first? Yeah. All right, Mary. So we're just putting it, so you said that it's closer to the edge? Right. So we can have so easy can access. Marching up to freedom land Ain't gonna let racism turn me round This week on HK The Hopkins Youth Commission's Martin Luther King Day of Service 2018 <laughs> This week on the Senior View, Ray McLeod talks to Gail Clifford and John Palmer again 
about all the monuments on the common. Of mm -hmm. the brass pl uh, bronze plaque. This was put in position at the end of August, and the dedication was held at the Congregational Church across the street. And they would have held it on the common, except that the weather was very bad. So. Welcome back to the Margie and Lisa show. And we are really, really lucky and thrilled and, and honored to have Detector Bill Burchard with us today. And Bill is somebody who has been working on some of the recent, um, I don't I don't know, it's a crime spree? It's not a crime spree, but little episodes. <laughs> right. And the way that, it, the, the, the reason I thought of this is because my yeah. daughter's car ha got smashed, I the window yes. smashed, yeah. smash and grab in front of Swoon. And I know that's an area that uh, has some activity. It really? Has, it has in the past, yeah. Mm. So we just want to know what, what can citizens of Hopkinton do? Um, I've got this great, like it, lock it, keep it. Mm -hmm. that, Absolutely. Um, Great slogan. Yeah. <laughs> well, I had my car, and it was my fault. Someone broke in my car and took money out of my car because I had money in my car, and I didn't lock it. Oh, well, I would so, say yeah. it's your fault. Yeah. But, <laughs> right, exactly. But still, I mean, again, I think locking, you know, like, and it's hard because we live in a community that you feel really safe. We know right. our neighbors. We, You know what I mean? So I think it's, I think it's hard for some people to believe that we do but have still, crime. But still, if there's a dog and there's a piece of meat on the table. Right. Is it, you know, <laughs> right, that's right. not your best plan. Right. You want to put that away. Right. right. Well, it was in the glove compartment. But no, yeah, I'm not yeah, saying yeah, yeah. I'm not yeah. saying that. But I know my daughter had her wallet in the back seat. You know, she went into work. She yeah. just didn't think. That's right. where she put it. Didn't right. think. Right. right. It's, a, it's a crime of opportunity, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I know there was, um, was it a, a month, a couple months ago, maybe in the summer, I heard of a smash and grab in the parking lot on the loop road uh, of hopkins yes oh. and yep. then um was there another one like that so so there seems to be a pattern of someone who i and i i have great compassion for mm -hmm. people who have drug problems yes. or mental illness so all i can think is it's someone who is it's desperate, desperate. Yeah. or or just right. thinks woohoo this is so fun no one's gonna know and i'm gonna do this thing I don't know what it is, yeah. and and my hunch because I've worked in the schools, um, and I know kids from second, third grade, and so, you know, it's somebody right. who feels a little bit out of touch with their peers, or there's something going on yeah, in their family. What's your theory you know, so, yeah, what's your theory? Yeah, what's your theory? We we love these kids. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's our these are our kids, in my opinion, um, but some of them need a little. Gardens and right. absolutely, yeah. And what I think, think that's what police do as well. I mean, yeah. you, you not only arrest, I mean, but you guys also kind of help get people a little bit back on track. I mean, I think people think of you or... as an authority, but I also think that police officers have a role of kind of helping uh, those absolutely. wayward children. Yeah. I mean, or that's, wayward a, that's people. a huge part of our job is mm -hmm. uh, when we actually send cases to court. Diversion. A lot of times it's either diversion with younger people or. Mm -hmm. um, there are programs that we can put adults through, whether it's uh, drug rehabilitation or uh, community service, mm -hmm. things right. of that nature. So, so in in terms of court diversion, is that a community service, <coughs> or they have to seek counselors, or what kind of things? It can be anything. Any one of those things, pretty okay. much. It's what the you know, um, whether it's a school resource officer or myself, as mm -hmm. the court officer as well. I, I actually. I wear two hats. So you make <laughs> recommendations, though, maybe when you go to court, when they're seeing a case, is that what happens? You kind of say, well, this is the first offense, and this is, Correct. you know, they, they did commit this crime, but we're recommending. Absolutely. And yep. that's kind of what you guys end up doing. So what are the types of crimes you see in Hopkinton, or what do you think are the highest risk crimes, or what do you, what do you see? Um, you know, fortunately, mm -hmm. this is a, you know. Very low crime. Very, very low crime. Uh, area, mm -hmm. uh, especially in the town. Mm -hmm. um, I think we ran the numbers, I think 365 days up till today. We've had, um, you know, things of this nature we're talking about now break, breaking and entering, yeah. mm -hmm. car breaks, uh, commercial breaks. Mm -hmm. We've had uh, 10 motor vehicle breaks mm. in, in the last in year. The last As year. a broken window kind of thing? or, or Not so necessarily. Whether, um, 
you know, just the mere entering a vehicle oh, is okay. considered well, mine was breaking considered, and entering. Even though yep. I didn't have it sure. locked. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, they didn't break anything. So, just... so um, are they all in a, the central uh, area? Is there a hot spot? spot? Seems like... Seems like <clears throat> this area is mm. very hot. Yeah, I guess you could Downtown say. But area. it's uh, there's been other areas Little throughout pockets. the town. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Okay, yeah. Um, and so what what tips do we have to deter robbery? So obviously not leaving something valuable in your car right. that they can see. Absolutely, what else? but that's what we call our, our, um, a crime of opportunity. Right, they're looking windows, checking mm-hmm. dashboard seats, back seats. Uh, if they can't see it necessarily they'll go on to the next car right. so yeah um, definitely lock your cars lock mm-hmm. your homes mm-hmm. right lock that's your cars a, that's lock the your first homes. step <laughs> right um, what about packages outside I know that's oh. a big thing and that I was, do, uh, you know. that was huge um, not necessarily in our town but yeah, in the that. surrounding communities right um, unfortunately would... it's been on the rise too in the last few years well I think it's easy because like I have stuff delivered and then you know mm-hmm. I I don't have a normal schedule so I'm in and out of the house all the time I work from home so I think my if someone was watching my house they may not you know they'd see a car in the driveway or whatever but you have a lot of cars in the yeah way. I know there's always yeah, there's somebody <laughs> visiting the horses or whatever but you know what I mean so it's my house has a lot of traffic so you know, my friends finally talked me into getting an alarm and locking my doors. Yeah, yeah you know what that's I mean. The, uh, motion lights are. Yeah, that's what I have all the way. Uh, yeah, very outside cameras. Uh, yeah, that's been that's huge. That's what I put in. Yeah. Yeah, and so I think uh, I think what's happening with the packages is people aren't going to Toys R Us. It's got to go into bankruptcy. They're right. ordering things online. Right. People think, you know, so the packages pile up at the door because people aren't I don't, going to the store anymore. I don't go to the That's store why. much. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. why. You know, so. so this this wonderful um, little flyer um, says, don't make your valuables an easy target. Lock your vehicle every time. Mm-hmm. Don't leave electronics or other valuables visible, visible blah, 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 mm-hmm. in your vehicle. Don't let your, um, don't set your items down and trust that no one will right. take them. If you so actually that again happened to my daughter, put a had her purse at the mall, mm-hmm. right. went to go look in a store, came back, purse wasn't there, right. of course, right, right, and she Crime just thought she felt so yeah. just yeah, absolutely. <gasps> violated, and I was like, well, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but but I know this. I right. grew up in Newton, lived in Brookline. I, you know, we know this. Right. But she didn't, and poor thing. <laughs> if you if you use a locker at work, school, or the gym, lock it. Mm-hmm. Always lock doors and windows. Right. So that right there is um, a great list. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and, absolutely. Um, so reporting. So if people see suspicious activity or someone in the neighborhood see that something yeah, say something. Yeah. see something, say something. Absolutely. And mm-hmm. um, that and it, it, it you'd be surprised how much that can help. Sure. They see something at night. They hear something. So they give us a call. And so that's my next question. Is this happening more at night? Is this a kid? This is in my imagination. There's a kid walking around, you know, sees something, smash, grab, go, because it's night and people can't see. Primarily, it's, it happens at night. I mean, you have the cover of darkness. So right. Mm-hmm. So it's not only if you see something, if you hear right. glass breaking. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Hi, yeah. I just heard glass breaking, right? So yes. yep. when I lived in Cambridge, I actually had someone break in my house in Cambridge. And the police officer always said, keep your blinds down, so you hide everything. But oh, yeah. they said even if they, <clears throat> the only way they could prosecute the person that stole the property is that they had to have it in their possession. Is that? When they were caught. Yeah, when they're caught. So is that mm-hmm. also true? Like can say, oh, well, I saw this kid, he looks like this. Is that still true? I'm talking 25, 30 or years ago. Or their fingerprints could be on the wall. Right. Fingerprints, that- but it's. There are various charges. Like it's difficult to charge somebody with stolen property. Rather, we charge them with receiving stolen property, oh, where they okay. would have it in their possession. Right, right. We can't prove that they actually broke in and stole it. But mm-hmm. yeah, uh-huh. you don't have an image. Or they might say somebody gave it to me. Right. Right. Yeah. So this um, email question: Are my tips confidential? How can I safely report issues through social media, through text, etc.? So how would they? I, I'm imagining they would call. I, say, I called the other day because some you know, guy four nine seven three four zero one. 
Is the police number? Right. Or 911. Or 911. Yeah. I called I the other so. day because I saw a guy hit a kid, like tap a kid in a crosswalk, and then he backed up in the crosswalk to yell at the kid for <gasps> crossing without looking. So I was like out of my mind. So I took down the license plate and then I called, you know, called Absolutely. the yeah. main number and, I, and they asked if I, they asked me if I would leave my name and I said, of course. Sure. You, you know what I mean? So, but I think they gave me that option of okay. whether or not to, you know, do it. So no, tips are confidential unless you want to leave your name. Correct. You don't have to leave your name. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Now there's, I know there's been con some confusion with people calling the station and aren't used to it. It's an automated system now. Mm -hmm. Takes a long so time. So if they dial zero right mm -hmm. away, you get mm -hmm. a dispatcher. So. so so you can call whichever, so 3401, but then hit zero instead of wait. Correct. For mm -hmm. the, the rigmarole. Yeah, and I think Absolutely. with any phone system, that seems to be representative. <laughs> no, I know, that's what I do too. That's what I do. I hit zero or I say represent. In the future, it helps to have a witness name, yes. phone ah. number, or something. Yeah, if, right, because if, if you need has, to prosecute, or if something. a crime has happened, we need. Well, and take down information if so. you see something like that. The first thing I did is I opened up my phone in notes and said the I took the license plate number and the make and model of the car. Sure. Yeah. You know, so those that stuff's really helpful as well. So if something happens, you see it. You know, take a good look at the person, identifying mm -hmm. clothing. You know, what they look like, what kind of car they're driving, or yep. or whatever. I think that. That's what you, all you guys have. I mean, that information is... Well, as much information as possible yeah. I mean, to help. Yeah. So I guess the next question is, um, so what we need to know is try to identify, call as soon as possible. Um, if you see something, say something. Mm -hmm. Protect your valuables, lock, you know, mm -hmm. keep it on sight. Yeah. Um, so the other question is, have you been successful in identifying certain people and talking with them or... You have certain productive trails. We're not asking you can't for names, tell, but you, you can't find, tell too yeah. much. <laughs> um, we can read, we, we we can have read been, the police We have been though. productive in the past. Uh, a couple of uh, breaks have been solved. Okay. And Great. charges are in the works right now. Uh, actually, one individual is in custody. Good. Um, so then sometimes you may see a dip. Absolutely. If there's someone that is, that's their behavior. And it, it helps. We have a, um, it's a law enforcement network. So throughout the state, uh, oh. Law enforcement agencies can communicate, share information. Nice. So, um, we, on one of our how big does that cases, work? That it's uh, via email or uh, it's like a uh, phone chat like, room or a, okay. probably like a oh you guys use mostly a an email or, system yeah. yeah 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 but uh, along with we got some assistance with uh, Worcester Police Department to uh, solve one of our crimes breaking yeah. enterings so interesting. What other, so what other crimes do you see? I mean, like, back to that that question, so breaking and entering and things like that, do you see vandalism, do you see, I mean, we had that on our trail. Unfortunately, we see yeah. the wide gamut of most, most crimes. Mm -hmm. uh, vandalisms aren't that too many, mm -hmm. but uh, we get the occasional vandalism calls. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, town property, tagging, things of yeah. that nature, so. And then. I, I, oh. I can remember it was, um, it was actually really upsetting that there were there was a group of boys on bicycles that would go around and kind of just harass people. Oh, and really? I, oh yeah, and I know. I mean, I'm thinking <laughs> 13, 13, 14 year old board kids will say, "Hey, let's go." I yeah. mean, that's in my that's in my right. imagination of what's happening. But I know that they harassed um, someone who was running on the track. Who happened to be African American? Oh, I remember and, that. That was last that year, right? That broke my heart. Yeah, that was most yeah. yeah, yeah. Because we don't, you know. To, again, I think of us as a family here, as yeah. a Hopkinton family. Right. right. Me and too. so, anytime somebody targets someone else, and I know it's because they're kids and they just don't get it, and they think it's cool, or they're showing off for their friend, or they're right, whatever, whatever they're yeah. filled with. Um, so, has that bicycle group of kids been? Identified. They've been, well, they've been identified. Uh, yes, they've been identified, yes. and they've been spoken to yes. him, them, and their parents. Uh, yes. It's been handled through the school system Perfect. as well as the juvenile court system. Awesome. So okay, okay. Great. So you have some and tools in your toolkit on how to kind of yeah. yeah. get that, and hopefully they're yeah. on the right direction. Hopefully. And I think as parents <laughs> and and community members, you know, back to the see something, say something. If I yes. saw those kids for a while there, I I would walk the track in the morning after yes. I dropped Celia off at school. Yes. I would walk over 
over and say something to them. Well, and I, you, I, you, I you know what I mean? Because I know who they are from third grade. And right. You know better than this. Right. But I think some responsibility needs to be taken there. And then as a parent, if Parents. your kid is doing things, yep. be aware of what your kids are doing. If they're doing something Absolutely. you think is wrong, well, and mitigate it. The you flip know? side of that is, I know there are some parents who say, not my kid, right. not in my backyard. Right. They couldn't possibly, right. but they don't realize what happens to a child when they're in that peer pressure situation right. or kids, you whatever know. Whatever influence they have in their life at that point. Or, or whatever, what, you know, if they sit in front of the television playing Modern Warfare 24-7 and then, right. you know, there's less parental connection. So right. it's kind of sad. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah. But I think that's an important Some thing Some kids to are left up. to be enraged by their video games. You know? Exactly. Right, right. So we do have another email. It says, have you ever been involved in any kind of cyber crimes? Mm. Scams, cyberbullying, etc. <clears throat> what can we do to protect ourselves in those situations? Great, Great. Uh, email. Thank, Thank you. you. Un unfortunately, we've been inundated with uh, reports <laughs> of cybercrime. Um, really? Scam, scam alerts, phone mm -hmm. calls, emails. <sighs> it's to the point where it, we we just don't have Once the manpower to investigate. That much. So my question uh. is, because I got I got a call from. Well, of course, the Nigerian prince or whatever the one <laughs> yeah. thing, you know, my uh, someone. I so I knew that like was that, yeah. and that right. was I don't know ten years ago. I knew that was not right. <laughs> um, and then a friend, you know, I'm try I'm stuck in London and I don't right. have any money and I can't, I've seen that, you know. Yeah. And then um, and then some catfishing things. But um, I also know that their their a call came from someone who said they were in the CDC, and they're checking on. Um, they're just checking into flu immunizations. So really? I said, how do I know? And this doesn't sound right because I like to help people. That goes through the state lab. I mean, because so I know So what she my did was <laughs> she, she gave me the website. She gave me the phone number. Hmm. She gave me the... So this person gave me all the information. I went to the website. It was there. Hmm. Everything, all the information she gave me was there. But still in my head, yeah, you're I'm like, thinking, yeah. did they just go on that website, and get all that information, sure. so they could then pass it along and then get, you know, information that's private. That, I, I mean, I work with the CDC, and I doubt that, you know. When in doubt, yeah, don't give any information. Yeah, that's like never over the phone. If right. they need you, you to know. get in touch, yeah. yeah. And then um, Andy asks, what is the safe exchange parking spot for, and why is it useful? I don't even know what that is. I don't either. Uh, it's uh, something new, oh. actually. It was implemented maybe a year ago, year and a half uh -huh. ago, where uh, if you have Craigslist sales or you oh. know something of that sort, you can uh, have a safe space. It's, it's, it's videoed by camera. Perfect. Today. I w I do. Really? I sold a car at CVS. I mean, you at CVS and Ashland. Yeah, it's Same helped thing. to try and prevent. And where do we know? Any do they call or, the police to find that out? How do they know where that safe exchange? How do we do it's that? It's the uh, parking space right in front of the station. I believe oh, it's, it's labeled, but I'm not positive. Okay, no kidding. So you sign. could do Love it right it. at the police station. Yes. Okay. Yep. You guys are the best. That's awesome. And we are actually out of time. Yeah. Time flies when that you're getting quick. great yeah. information. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. 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 And, and, and thank you so much. Thank you. Um, I was, uh, hope I was... That was helpful. Absolutely. You have been incredibly Those helpful. Well, and we want to all the police officers and, you know, thank Absolutely. you for what you yep. do for us and every day. Like, we, it makes me feel safe. And yep. we, I, I know do I feel very grateful. No, I just wanted yeah. to say that oh, we actually ahead. have a couple of officers, Officer Buckley and Officer yes. Schofield, who are mm -hmm. trained. Okay. Uh, if you have issues, you had questions about how your house should be set up. Oh, Security-wise, oh, they, they're trained actually to come to the house. and. Oh, no kidding. So <coughs> they'll come to the house and do an inspection yep. or give yep, you a recommendation? All right. Recommendations. And awesome. that's it for tonight. Thank we thank you so much, Officer Burchard and uh, Detective Burchard. Sorry, yeah. I get all my My pleasure. And thank, um, you. thank you for your heroism in our town and <laughs> all the police and fire and DPW. And We're lucky. Thank you for joining us. Team effort. <laughs>